welcome to Lily's Nest. Um, I'm Lisa, your host. This is a video, uh, a video podcast about knitting, spinning, uh, fleece preparation, and other adventures in crafting. I decided to try a podcast because I've been so inspired by so many of the podcasters that are out there that share um, their their craft and and what they make. It's just it's so inspirational. I've got lots of favorites and lots of uh, podcasts that I listen to on a regular basis. And I really appreciate the time they take to share with the community what they're, what they're working on and also to share their personalities because invariably they're just lovely people. So um, that's the reason I wanted to start. I'm filming this on my iPad and I'm not quite sure where I'm supposed to look because I know I like it when people look at the camera and uh, not away from the camera, so I'm hoping that this is actually working out okay. So I'd, let's jump right in. What's on the needles? Um, so I've got a couple things on the go. The first thing I've been working on is the Nanook cardigan by Heidi Kermeyer. And I really got a lot done. I've got this, I'm following the pattern, pretty much. Uh, I mean, I actually, I'm following the pattern 100%, except for the decreases in the front, which I'm not doing. And I love how she has you do the sleeves first, because I know sleeves are just, nobody likes to knit sleeves. So the fact that they're done now while I'm knitting the body is pretty awesome. So when I had uh, taken it off the needles, um, when I finished the sleeves, I'd actually tried it on, and I have to say, I think it's going to actually fit me perfectly. I am not really a garment knitter. I, I'm intimidated by knitting garments. And uh, someone, um, Andrea, on the Fruity Knitting Podcast, is so inspirational with, with the garments that she creates and so encouraging to new knitters, just jump in and make a garment and just try it. I mean, I've made shawls before, I've made uh, baby blankets, I've made, uh, I made a vest for my husband. I'm going to ignore that. Uh, maybe I'll learn how to edit. Okay, so next time I think I'll make sure that I turn the phone off when I podcast. So as I was saying, this is the, this is the Nanook cardigan, and I was inspired by Emily of the Fibertown podcast to make this. Of course, she made hers out of hand spun and it's gorgeous because she's amazing. So I'm really making a lot of progress. I'm, I'm into the body. I just got now just knit, 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 and then do the ribbing at the bottom and I'm gonna have a nice, uh, a nice cardi. This is Swan's Island Merino and it's naturally dyed in indigo. It's very soft and, and very velvety and I just know it's not going to wear all that well just because it is so soft and it's already starting to get a little bit fuzzy. But I think it's just going to be a nice warm hug uh, to put around my shoulders. Um, we're going to go up north this, this summer and it gets cool at night. I think it'll be beautiful. And look at those decreases. She's got this just, her, Heidi Kermeyer just has this, just a beautiful way of, of uh, excuse me, increasing around the shoulders. That's just so, so lovely. So I've got a little bit of here I think. So that's one thing I've really been working diligently on and I'm hoping to have that finished soon. The other thing that I've picked up recently again is the French Can Can Shawl which everybody was making last year or so. So it's just such a beautiful pattern. It's by Mademoiselle C. It's a paper pattern on Ravelry. It's got this lovely lovely French braid and eyelet section around this the shawl and this is for a very dear friend of mine who's retiring from my uh, I work at a high school and my my good friend is the registrar and she's retiring and it's her birthday today so I'm home today uh, I'm having a personal day we're having car issues so I'm, I'm at home experimenting with podcasting a little bit So I'm making this for her for her birthday and for uh, as a going as a retirement gift. But I know that I'm going to see her because her and I go to a lot of the fiber events together. We've gone to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool and the Stitches, and you know we really enjoy going to the fiber events. I 
I've sort of been an a great enabler for her, and oh, I'd love it if she would do a podcast with me because I think podcasts with two people are wonderful and fun, and they're they're just really one of some of my favorites. So that's the second thing I'm working on. The third thing uh, I'm working on, and I just started this today, which I know I shouldn't because I have to finish the shawl. But I was home today, and I was sort of down kind of down in the dumps just the end of the school year is bittersweet and you know I've had, had some had some challenges this year and you know just really feeling sort of weary and uh and too you know just with things going on in the world it's just it's just you know you can really get kind of you can let it get you down so I started this shawl it's called the pure shawl by cabin four and it's just a very very simple stockinette shawl with with um, a textured pattern in the middle which I'm going to use oh, so what am I using this is echo duo by cascade this is the just the cream color I've had this in my stash for a while and this is blue sky alpaca Surrey merino which is a little bit lighter than this but not much I'm going to use this for the the central portion of this of the shawl it's got a sort of a textured uh, pattern in the middle so I just think this is going to be so so pretty and just comfort knitting you know just so I just knit 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 you know and and uh, you know de-stress after a day of work so those are the three things that I'm I'm currently working on on my wheel I'm a uh, I love to spin uh, I love to oh, excuse me just drop this on my wheel I, on my Lendrum, I am spinning this gorgeousness. Oh, oh, it is backwards. <laughs> oh, no, I know that happens. It actually happens. This is called Inner Reflection. It's by Al Alonzi Fiber Arts. It's uh, Beth Ann in, on Etsy, and she's amazing. She is such an artist. I have lots of her braids in my stash, and I, I really lose my all self-control when she has an update. But this is 37.5% uh, baby alpaca, 37.5%, 18.5 micron merino, 12.5% mulberry silk, and 12.5% cashmere. And it is soft. I told her it's like it's like a kitten's belly. I mean it it's just it is just absolutely gorgeous. And it's a gradient. It it's it's very, very dark here, and then I'm I'm splitting it in half. I'm and then it goes to this gorgeous, gorgeous sort of royal blue. So it's a, it's a royal blue, then to a dark, dark, almost indigo. It's just, just beautiful. And uh, I'm spinning it on my, my folding lendrum here. I've been spinning for a couple of years now. I taught myself how to spin, and I really, really enjoy it. And I have enough stash to last probably for the rest of my life. I really don't need to buy anything else, but will that stop me from buying more fiber? Probably not. I know it won't. <laughs> I know I'm not alone in this, but this, I swear it's, fiber does something to your hormones. I truly believe it as if uh, it, it's, it's just some sort of something. <laughs> this is crazy. Love it, love it, love it. Um, the other thing I'm working on, I love to. One of the things you'll you'll learn about me is I love fleece and I love all natural uh, wool, whether it be alpaca or or all different breeds of sheep. And I've really been studying all the different sheep, and I have lots of different uh, breeds in my stash. So uh, one of the couple of latest acquisitions of mine were. Move all my stuff away. And see, now this isn't as easy as it looks. I really appreciate those podcasters out there who really know what they're doing, which I don't. One of the fleeces that I just got, I just had to share this with everybody. This is just a piece of this. It's a Coriadale. It was a coated Coriadale from Elizabeth Hubbard. I bought it uh, off the Facebook raw wool. Group. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is raw. 
this is how it, this is the whole six pounds of it. That is how it looks. I mean, nary a seed or piece of dirt or, you know, anything in it. I mean, when I washed it, it was just a little yellow. The water was yellow. I mean, there's no, there's no dirt. I mean, <laughs> I mean what does she have them in their house or something? But it's very, it's a beautiful long staple. It's about a four inch staple. And she described the fleece as voluminous and that's exactly what it is. It's just very, very poofy. And um, it's just lovely. It's not the softest fleece I have. I mean, it's definitely a me uh, on the upper end of medium, but I'm just gonna wash it, flick it with a carter, flick card it and spin it. This is what it looks like clean, which, <laughs> You totally can't even, I mean, other than a little bit of yellow, I mean, you, you can't even tell. It's just absolutely stunning. And I'm I'm just imagining this into some sort of Aran sweater, something with cables. So if I spin it, if I flick it and spin it from the end, it'd be a semi-worsted um, spin, though I really am a woolen spinner in my heart. I, I, I do a little worse at spinning on my spindles, but on my wheel, I love long draw. I just, so a little story. So a couple, few years ago, it's probably three years ago now, I decided two weeks after I had declared that I would never spin, I found myself in the, uh, the proud owner of, of, of a Lendrum spinning wheel and didn't even know how to use it. I was so frustrated and um, I got Maggie Casey's video and her book and she really, uh, just reading her book and watching her video, it started to click. And then I watched uh, a video. Well, first of all, I went to a, a fiber event, Michigan. I think it, no, it was a Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. It's the last day, it's Sunday. My friend and I were just there hanging out and there was a barn sale and I bought my first fleece. And this was literally months after I had purchased my wheel. And it wasn't skirted and it was dirty and there was you know, all sorts of unmentionables in it. But it was a beautiful Moret Shetland. And I think the Shetlands, I think her name was Mocha or something. Because it's just a beautiful color. I didn't know what I was doing. But I just dove right in. I took all the junky bits off. And later on I went back and I skirted it some more. Because I didn't realize what was usable and what wasn't usable. And I bought myself some hand carters and watched uh, Ruth McGregor's long draw video on, on YouTube. And I was just mesmer mesmerized by her beautiful spinning and just practice and practice and practice. And I'm still not as good as she is, but I became a long draw spinner for sure. Um, I, I tend to spin a little worsted when I'm on a spindle, but when I'm on a wheel, that inchworm is just drives me crazy. It just, it's so slow and it's, it's just... <laughs> just can't I just can't I can't do I don't think I'll ever be a worsted spinner but but I think that this would really do well in a semi worsted spin it, it would be great woolen also I have six pounds so I'm thinking of blending it with some white baby alpaca that I just received I actually just received it today um, the little alpaca was frosty and it's his first shearing so I've got some drying right now on the rack but it's pretty it's got a lot of veg matter in it, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm thinking of doing a blend on my drum carter. So that's that. And then the other one I'm working on, the other raw fleece I'm working on is this, which is, these are washed locks. This is Rommeldale or CVM. And Belinda is the name of this sheep. And again, I got this on Facebook, the Facebook uh, raw sheep, raw fleece group, which is very dangerous. So, if, you know, if you want to buy fleece or you don't want to buy fleece, don't go on those boards because there are, there have been, I've, I've gotten a couple of really nice fleeces from that, from that group. Uh, I've got a lot of fleece. <laughs> I have a lot of fleece. I, I, the reason, one of the reasons I want to do a podcast is so that I maybe get some more structure to my crafting. And if I have to, if, if I choose to do a, 
podcast, it'll keep me on track to get certain things done. It probably won't work, but but hey. So anyway, this is this is it. it's very bouncy. It's got it's got dark gray and then silver gray and then dark gray and then it's got a little like blonde tips, which I think is pretty common. For this, I, I wash this in tool, like a tool bag, and I've just been experimenting on my spindle with this. So, yeah. So, it actually spins, it's got multiple colors, it's got like a little frosty quality to it. Yep. You really can't, can't see it, but very well. But, uh, it's fun. This is another spin I, from, uh, Turned on the cut. He's also in England. I've got a thing for English spindle makers, I guess, because he, uh, yeah. Obviously, I'm not going to spin the whole fleece on this, but the, though actually, you can carry it around with you. You could probably be really a production spindle spinner. I know Abby Frankamont claims that, and I well, of course, um, you know that's what they do um, in part, parts of the world. And for 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 years, generations, that's how um, yarn was created. So it would be quite a challenge. As somebody's talking about a Shackleton challenge, like wash, prep, spin on a spindle and make a garment. That would be <laughs> pretty awesome. I just need more time. So that's what's on my needles, what's on my wheel, what's on my spindle. So that's really about it for today. I feel like I have a lot to share and I, I would like to join the larger community of podcasters just to You know, just be part of that that collective. I feel like I'm sort of a, you know, I've, I've been a, a lurker with podcasters, as they say, and I thought, well, just just have a go, just go ahead and and try it, and it's just uh, you all you podcasters out there are really, you're really brave for doing it, and I appreciate all of you very much. So. Well, that's all for now. I think I'm going to sign off, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.